In this video, I'm going to talk about the recent Chinese web drama Zhenhun Guardian, and it's a really peculiar one. Hi, you're watching Avenue X, where a junkie on good storytelling shares her thoughts, knowledge, and occasional weird ideas of stories and how they're told. I've got a couple of people asking on my channel do a review for Guardian Zhenhun. I've heard about this drama on Chinese internet. There's a huge fan base of it. I know it's been uh, out there for over a month and it's really popular. I just never got the time to watch it. Since I got pushed a lot of fan art on my other social media account about this drama, I was like, okay, might as well just check it out. This drama is 40 episodes long and currently it has already aired 32. So I've actually watched 32. Don't ask me how I did it. I, I don't have a life. So I think it's not fair to call it first impression because it's already almost gone. But then it's not technically a full review yet. Although I'm pretty sure I know what's gonna happen for the next eight episodes. Before I go into talk about this drama extensively, um, I want to first thank my patrons from Patreon. Ling Ling HK, Ladine Taylor, Adam Hefes, Snow White Fox and Lucy Potter. Thank you so much for supporting me on uh, Patreon. If you haven't caught up with this, uh, I launched my Patreon page last month and so far I've had quite a lot of people joining in. Thank you so much for your support. I would be posting drama related stuff on there as well as videos where I watch entire episodes of Chinese dramas and commenting on the things that I see on screen. So if you're really interested in this type of content, you might want to go to my page and check it out. So let's talk about Zhenhun. Although now we're only at the halfway point of 2018, I would say this probably is the most peculiar web drama that I will see in 2018. Well, let me first talk about a side thing that's really not that important but I find it's really really interesting is the title theme song which is at the very beginning of each episode. It's actually an English song. Usually that doesn't happen to Chinese dramas as a theme title. You can find English songs within the drama but not really as a theme title. This is the first time I can remember that I hear a fully English song. And it's extremely well written by somebody who is Chinese but who knows English perfectly. And it's really epic. It's an epic song that reminds you of a much bigger scale production such as a huge fantasy drama or film. So in a way, this, this song is way too big for this really cheaply produced web drama, but it's very impressive. It kind of makes the drama more serious than it actually is. So if you're interested, I do recommend you check it out. Just Google or find it on YouTube. It's called We Won't Be Falling. As for the drama, the reason of why I say it's one of the most peculiar dramas probably that will come out in 2018 is it has all the flaws that you can find about web dramas to the point where you are 100% or 95% sure that it's going to be a disaster and it's going to fail, yet it didn't. So I think that makes the drama extremely peculiar. Let me first say all the things that I noticed that are just really, really not good about this drama. This is a sort of procedural drama in a way that you have many, many different supernatural cases that a core group of characters go on solving. While they're doing that, they have their main sort of character through line. So it's a very common story structure. But the biggest problem with this story is it just has some of the most stupid ridiculous cases that you ever see. Um, the pacing is all over the place for this drama. It's like the storyteller of the drama doesn't really know how to direct or how to structure this type of story resulting in a really really chaotic pacing and within each case the characters are trying to solve some of them are just plainly <laughs> not well written. That's one major problem. Then the technical aspect of the drama is not ideal either. It has some of the most <laughs> amateur <laughs> CGI I've seen in recent years. So the CGI part is completely failure. Uh, I know this drama probably has very little money because you can tell the sets are just, they're like, there's like half a dozen sets and that's it. They, they're constantly running around within those few sets. Their office, there's this street outside of their office and there's this mountain place that whenever they go to the wild, they go to that place and very limited number of places and it looks really cheap. 
then the dubbing and they should get their money back i'm just saying because um i think the lead roles use their own voice but it's all adr and then for a lot of supporting roles it's completely done by dubbing actors and that's fine but the thing is within the same person's delivering a paragraph of lines for example the camera is on you and you're talking there are like a couple of words or a couple of short lines within a whole paragraph that's completely dubbed with a different voice or within a very different environment so the sound sounds completely jarring as long as you're not deaf you'll be able to hear that and that happens to every episode so i don't know what happened to the dubbing it's very annoying so you you've been warned if you are very sensitive to voices you're gonna be tripped up many times watching this drama as if that's not enough uh, there's another thing that's really 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 not well done in this drama which is the extras acting because for each cases you'd come across sort of one-off characters that just show up for a particular case and they disappear and generally speaking these extras acting are borderlining um, I don't even have a word for that and I think I do a better job than them the two main leads are brilliant they're sort of immediate surrounding supporting roles are good but the outside of that circle wow i've seen some s really bad acting i'm just saying like better not to watch the screen just listen while while those plots are going on because <laughs> you may not survive <laughs> that bad acting and you may want to just drop the drama because of that so now i have talked about <laughs> all the bad things that could completely uh sink this drama but it didn't happen but although a lot of people are completely aware of all the flaws of this drama they still watch it and love it and the reason is the two main lead actors i think this drama right now is so <laughs> hated with quotation mark but loved by audience is 99 percent due to the casting choice and also the ability of those two actors so i have to talk about briefly about the web novel this novel is actually a supernatural novel and also an investigative novel and the original setup uh, is about gods and humans and ghosts and all that and it's heavily referenced to chinese traditional mythology and because of that you are not allowed to make such things these days basically if anything is supernatural it can only happen before the founding of new china which is 1949 anything that's set in contemporary time or modern time you cannot talk about gods and ghosts and whatever it's not gonna pass censorship then the original novel is also very explicitly and blatantly a bl novel if you don't know what that is that's called boy love for chinese web novel community there are three big major themes that a lot of novels contain which are time travel body swapping and bl and i would say a lot of novels actually contain all three of them or at least two of them for example a princess agent the original story is a body swapping and a time traveling kind of thing fu yao is also actually time travel and body swapping kind of theme bl is also a huge thing it has been popular for over a decade i think and a lot of novels are talking about that but because this is also a <laughs> landmine place for Chinese dramas you can be explicit about these things or you would not pass censorship because this drama contains both the supernatural things and also the BL things the production changed everything in terms of how people are called uh, what exactly are they so instead of saying they're from hell or from underground world uh, they're from underground but as aliens so the, the, the reason to explain why people have supernatural powers in this drama is they're aliens they're humans and they're this type of aliens and there's other type of aliens and they avoided all terms that's related to mythology and in this drama they completely ignored that so basically you have to change everything not even being explicit that story is happening right now because it never really tells you what era it is and where which planet it is it's just called Haixing which is ocean star that's their planet so technically it's not even earth usually when that happens to a drama the original books fans will be very angry because you've basically changed everything yet a lot of original fans are really happy with this drama because they understand if they follow the actual writing it will never be made into a drama nobody would ever be able to see it i would say this drama is successful because of the casting choice of Zhu Yilong as Shen Wei and Bai Yu as Zhao Yunlan. They really do look like they walked right off the page of the novel, exactly to description. And their chemistry, the two actors' chemistry, works extremely well 
on screen. Although the novel is very clear about their relationship, um, the drama never do, does anything explicit. But I think both actors have read the original novel and they understand what they're doing, which is not being explicit about things, but them being explicit in terms of the emotional and connection and the look they give each other and how these two people work together. It's like every scene that you watch, you're like, yeah, yeah, make me believe it's brotherly love, it's not. But hey, you know, at least officially, it stays that way. Even within certain scenes, they are very explicitly putting the word out, brotherly love, xiong <laughs> But you know, it's not just that, okay? It's too obvious through their acting, it's not that. And I, I just think it's so funny to watch that on screen when almost all the audience, the crew, all understand what they're doing, but then they're not being explicit. And it's almost like playing a game with censorship. They like, yeah, we're acting it out in a very genuine and much more complicated way than what we're talking about, what we are acting. So I think for most of the audience of this drama who like this drama, they're really just watching the two main lead actors acting and their relationship and referring it to book and see how faithfully it has been. I'm personally not a huge BL fan. I don't care if it's BL or if it's you know, male and female, or it's female and female. I just, I just want to see good acting, convincing interactions between characters. And I think this drama did that apart from all its flaws, which is why I can still manage to watch the whole drama. Basically, whenever these two people come on screen and whenever there's a scene between them, I watch the screen. Other time, I listen and do other things because like I said, the drama really only has that part that's worth watching. I would recommend this drama to obviously the fans of these two actors. And I'm guessing if you are, you, you've already watched it, because why not? Or the people who are really interested in seeing this type of relationship on screen on Chinese uh, in Chinese dramas, but you've been warned by all the things that you may find just hard to deal with while you're watching this drama. I think from the first moment that you see these two characters meet in uh, episode one, you realize this drama is not going to fail because there's an immediate connection because the very detailed acting from both actors sometimes it's just within the eyes or the facial expressions tiny 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 micro expressions that just convince you that there there is a real genuine love between them and this drama is currently on youtube although it's very slowly uh, being english subbed i think it's it's up to episode 20. i have to say while i was watching this drama i laughed at all the things that are just not professionally done as if i'm looking at a comedy so i actually enjoyed it i was like oh that is ridiculous where are they doing that and then when it gets to the two main leads acting i just i just look at them as a fangirl and I enjoyed their acting very much. So that's how I watched this drama. And I think most people would watch the drama the same way. And that is why I would call this one of the most peculiar dramas of 2018. It's like, it has all the reasons to completely fail and turn into a disaster, yet it got saved by the two lead roles. They're acting, the actor's ability, the casting choices, whatever you want to call it, due to whatever reason. To the point that I actually want to make fan videos just for these two actors, <laughs> to cut them together in some way, because yeah, when you watch it, you probably will get what I mean. Thank you for watching Up New X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching and, and stay cool. <laughs> Don't get sunburned or heat stroke because summer is really here in North Hemisphere, I mean. <laughs>